Greetings, everyone. Thank you for being with us again. This week, we dedicate a whole session to definitive technology and the DT design philosophy. Joining us today are our very own top guys at Definitive Technology. We have Matt Alliance, our chief engineer for Definitive Technology based out of the engineering facility in Baltimore in East Coast. And we have Michael Greco, our senior director of category management loudspeakers, also from Sound United, who is based in the West Coast in Vista, California. Welcome, gentlemen. I'm happy that you are joining us again today, and thanks for your time. I am Frederick. I am joining you from Hong Kong, and both Phil and Jim will be co-hosting today. So I'm handing it, handing the floor to you guys. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Frederick, for the wonderful introduction, as always. And to Michael and Matt, thank you very much for joining us. Definitive was founded in 1990 by a group of guys that wanted to build speakers that had the performance of an electrostatic speaker, but got rid of some of the downsides of that speaker, but wanted to bring that performance level, that, that really high, high, high performance level down to more people let more people be able to participate in that and create a lot of value. So they came up with the original bipolar speakers and we have been doing that since 1990. We also wanted to make sure that they were easily integratable into the average living room so that everybody had the ability to put them in their house and have a great experience. So. That being said, Matt, let's talk about the definitive experience. What is that all about? Thanks, Kim. Well, I think the definitive experience is, is a listening experience that really envelops you, draws you in, and creates that emotional connection to what you're listening to. And to do that, you know, we can just look at the fundamentals of, of how we hear. And let's start off by just considering the frequency response that, <clears throat> that we as humans react to. And there, there are 10 octaves in, in the musical spectrum from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. And while there are some loudspeakers, and this is actually a drawback uh, of electrostatics, is they tend to not be able to cover the entire audible range. It is very difficult, physics being what it is, it's very difficult to truly reproduce deep bass and do it in an accurate way. So it's something we strive for all the time uh, at Definitive because when you have a loudspeaker that accurately reproduces the low frequencies, the harmonics uh, ring up through all the other octaves and you truly get a more natural integration. So one thing I always talk about is, is wide frequency response so you can reproduce all that natural timbre. The next thing I would talk about is dynamic range. You know, from the from the softest softs to the loudest louds, our ear brain system has a tremendous ability to resolve dynamic range. That's why the decibel scale is is actually logarithmic because we have such wide dynamic range. And you you must to create a satisfying experience, a type of experience we're trying to embody at Definitive. You must be able to play uh, loud sounds and then of course have uh, the subtle uh, subtle 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 lower lower quiet sounds. Loud sounds are hard with loudspeakers because of physics and moving air. And so you have to have a lot of dynamic range, but you must do that in an effortless way. That's the second fundamental tenet. The other thing uh, that I think is, is very unique, and Jim talked about the fact that <clears throat> Definitive takes a different approach and our bipolar loudspeakers takes a different approach to the sound field itself. We wanna create an incredibly immersive sound field where you feel like your room disappears and all you hear is the ambient information that is in the recording. So <clears throat> that is that is key to the definitive experience and, and create a more immersive uh, sound field than I think, uh, I think most other offerings that are out there. The last piece of the definitive experience to me is actually visual, it's not auditory. It's that we always endeavor to design a loudspeaker which visually is worthy of how beautiful the speaker sounds. I like to say it's it's easy to design a loudspeaker that's maybe ugly. It's harder to make a beautiful loudspeaker that actually sounds uh, amazing. So 
Th those would be the four core tenets, every definitive product that we make that we try to achieve. What are some of the technologies that we use to bring this obsession that you have to life? And you, you it's obsession in a good way, not in a negative way, Matt, as a compliment. <laughs> You have an no. obsession for, for Definitive and it shows. So what are some of the technologies that you use? So definitely, I, I love our, our phrase, what obsession sounds like. I think all of us in the Definitive team are, are very passionate about what we do and, and it does border on, on, on obsession. So anytime you're designing a loudspeaker, uh, you always have to start off with the ingredients and the ingredients are going to affect uh, the meal that you're creating. So uh, we talked about the, the, the broad frequency response. So let's start by talking about our tweeter. And tweeters have characteristic sounds, which even with crossover design, they're still always going to have an integral part of what the sound of the loudspeaker is. So Definitive, uh, we've always used metal dome tweeters. In specific, we have our annealed aluminum dome tweeter. And the tweeter itself is, is very important and the characteristics of a metal dome tweeter are such that they, they <clears throat> reproduce um, the, the timbre of what we are, uh, what you're listening to, but they do so in a very accurate and realistic way. Uh, of course, it's very important. Sometimes metal dome tweeters can be too bright and can be um, too tizzy. So we have over the years <clears throat> put tremendous amounts of time in engineering our tweeter and actually the annealing process, so what's the anneal mean? Well, it's, it's actually about taking a metal dome tweeter and, and making it softer through forming it. And the, the, when you think about aluminum, I think the, the, the emotional reaction to that is sort of like hard and brittle, but the aluminum dome tweeter is actually very soft, very subtle. You can, you can, it's very light and you can actually dent it very easily. It's, it's very fragile. And that's because we work hard to soften it, which is what the annealing process talks about. The next thing is with the, with the tweeter, it's actually married to a silk dome surround, which uh, damps out the edges and of course gives it the throw that it needs. So that's, that's a key piece of our ingredients on our transducer is the, um, uh, the aluminum dome tweeter. Uh, if you look at the tweeter, not only is it aluminum, I'm not sure if we covered what is the little thing in front of the um, of the tweeter, the waveguide. I'm not sure if we talked about that. Did we? I don't think we did. So the 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 design element in, in front of the tweeter is meant to optimize the frequency response and the dispersion of the tweeter by aligning the phase response of the signals coming from different points on the dome. We call it the 2020 lens. We call it yeah yeah. yeah. All, all the tweeters are, are the are, are the one inch dome, mm -hmm. um, and the but we have over the years optimized uh, okay. op optimized that design element. It's very critical, and and in manufacturing, it's mm -hmm. it's critical to get the distance between the dome uh, mm -hmm. and the face plate exactly right, so that you get the same extended high frequency response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we call it the wave alignment lens or something like that, right? Yes. What is the official name? Wave alignment lens, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And on demand, it, it's 2020, because you'll notice it is slightly different on the demand series. Uh, the next thing I think I would talk about would be our drivers. And we have very unique technology in our drivers with the BDSS. Uh, and so it's a dual suspension design. You have the outside surround, but you also have, and this is very unique to Definitive, at the inside at the voice coil, we have another suspension on the inside. What that enables us to do is to have a lot of linear throw, a lot of uh, distance and displacement so that the transducer can move across. And what that does for us, it gives us that wide dynamic range that we're talking about with very little distortion. The other thing that's unique about uh, our driver technology is the use of our linear waveguide. And the linear response waveguide is, is the element in the center and what that does is it smooths the frequency response and gives it a broader, uh, broader spray of sound such that when you're off axis, it still sounds as good as it does when you're on axis. That's a critical component to creating that large sound field uh, that we strive so hard to get at Definitive. So lastly, and now we're talking about the base here, is 
there, there are two key elements uh, in definitive. We spend a lot of time designing our low frequency transducers uh, and we make heavy use of base radiators. And base radiators is a design approach wherein it actually, um, it is not a sealed box, right? It has a, uh, a characteristic roll off of a vented system, but we don't use ported systems. Most loudspeakers are ported. And what a port is, is uh, imagine a plastic tube and it has a slug of air within the tube. And that is used to augment the low frequency radiation below the subwoofer. The problem with that design approach is, you know, somebody used to have an eight inch, 10 inch or 12 inch woofer, but port tubes tend to be very small in diameter, so you can tune them low. So the way a port works is you have this, think of a, a cork of air inside the port, and it has to move incredibly far to try to keep up with the subwoofer driver. What that creates is two unwanted uh, uh, problems. The first is, uh, uh, is distortion. As that, as that slug of air moves in and out, you get a lot of chuffing and you get a lot of distortion. That prevents us from being able to play these wide dynamic ranges without distortion. The other problem with the port tube is it's an organ pipe. So it plays notes by itself that are not in the, you know, the music that you're listening to. So instead, we use bass radiators. <clears throat> and it is a design approach where you actually have a physical surface, like, like a driver without a magnetic structure. You can see it here in the center. That's a, the big, huge magnet that's on the subwoofer driver. Right next to it, you see the base radiators, and they are driven entirely by the acoustic mass inside, uh, in, by the acoustic volume inside the cabinet. Base radiators to me are integral to the definitive sound. They give a tight, round uh, sound to the bass. Just imagine when you're listening to upright bass with a boom, 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 you know, that kind of tight, round sound. It's just, it's wonderfully reproduced by uh, the bass radiator technology. So we use that uh, as an integral part to what we create. So those, those are the key ingredients to the definitive sound that you'll find. Michael, does, does that experience end with the visuals of the speaker and the sound of the speaker, that speakers that Matt talked about? Or do we carry the, the that obsession farther? So I think another way to think about obsession is attention to detail, right? And so when we think about the definitive experience, there's a tremendous amount of attention paid to, to every little detail. And Matt's articulating how there's so much attention paid to the ingredients that go into a speaker. But as Matt also talked about, part of that experience is, is the aesthetic of the speaker. How does it look? Um, and so you can see up from the picture on the screen, you'll notice that those everywhere you see silver is real aluminum. One of the things about Definitive is, it, is it's, very, uh, it's, it's about uh, using real materials. And it's also about a premium experience. So the attention to detail um, not only stops, not just stops with, with how it sounds and the ingredients inside, but then every little detail on the outside is there. Um, it's actually, it, the inspirations come from um, a minimalist design called Bauhaus design. And so one of the things you'll notice about all definitive speakers is they tend to be what we call rectilinear. So they're basically, uh, you know, rectangles. They tend to have um, harder edges. Um, and but they also tend to be very minimalistic. They tend to be very very sleek. Um, but when we talk about detail, everything you see on there serves a purpose. That's the other thing. We're not just adding details for the sake of adding details. Everything when you on you see on a on a definitive speaker, and this is probably more most pronounced on something that most consumers or most end users will never see until they actually buy the speaker, and that is when they take it out of the box. Everybody has unboxed a loudspeaker before, and large floor standing loudspeakers can prove to be very challenging because of their bulk and their weight. And so the attention to detail does, is to unboxing that is tremendous. We spend a lot of time trying to make sure that one person can do it with a minimal amount of lifting. And then when you actually take it out of the box, you'll notice that it's very um, well organized and we actually pay attention to the details on the inside. So there's an accessory box and the accessory box is not just brown craft cardboard. It's actually a box that's been well designed and all your accessories are inside of it and it's laid out in a logical manner so the first things come out. When you assemble the base, you'll feel that it's a real aluminum base. The spikes, the pads, everything are aluminum. And again though, it's done in a way where it literally just fits and you can easily uh, affix the base to it. All those types of things to ensure that you 
have that best experience all take time. And so when we talk about what obsession sounds like, it's really about paying attention to the details from how it looks to how it sounds and to getting it out of the box. So it does translate everything that you see. And I, I, I can tell you that the unboxing experience is, is pretty terrific. I really, well, we, we, I we really talked like about it. it before, but we, um, we buy our competitors and I'm not going to name any names, but we unbox all their stuff. We listen to all their stuff. And, um, I think Definitive has one of the best unboxing experiences in the industry. Um, and we actually spend a lot more on it. Uh, when you compare it to other competitors, you get little, you know, blister packs and you get poly bags with one color manuals and your accessories are kind of scattered throughout. Um, you know, with a Definitive product, you don't have those things. So even so, if you're buying it, taking it home, we expect you do not need an installer to go and install this. You can do it out, but we pay attention to all those little details, and we spend a lot of money on that as well. It shows, believe me. I've yeah. I've unboxed plenty of them. As as you well. have made me yeah. unbox plenty of them. He likes um, Jim is loves bringing BP um, towers to demonstrations, and he doesn't bring just two. He's like, if we're gonna do a home theater, we're gonna bring like six or, you know, of these things, or eight of these things for theater demonstrations. And make sure and, you bring uh, the big ones, Jim. Only the big <laughs> ones. Only the big ones. And yeah, if, it, brings, if it weighs yeah. less than 60 pounds, um, yeah. you pick the wrong one. Yeah, we I know. Bring, What's the point? Yeah, why wouldn't 90, 80s you? I mean, everywhere. Why <laughs> exactly. <That's, laughs> and then let's throw some subs in there, too, just for the heck of it. Exactly. So do we have any questions out there, Frederick? There's actually one that's popped up from Mustak. Uh, asking when we can expect great subwoofers like the Supercube, Reference, and Trinity. But other than that, it's uh, slowly warming up. Yeah. So so I'll take this and I'll kind of preface it. It's, it's good we got this question out front because we always get questions about, have you thought about or are you going to do something in the future? <laughs> and the answer is yes, we have thought about a lot and we think about this every day. And we talk about this is what we like to do. So if we, if we were allowed to get together and it wasn't COVID, we would have beers and we would go talk about this stuff. And we're constantly thinking of new ways to um, uh, to do things as well as new ideas for products. Um, unfortunately, though, what we also don't do is we don't share um, programs that we're working on at this point um, that have not been announced. So to answer your question, have we thought about new subs? Absolutely. Do we have ideas for new subs and technologies? Absolutely. Uh, but at this time, I, just to preface it, because we'll get questions about, have you thought about, or have you, what about this? What about that? And I just, it's the same answer for all of them. So that's why I think it's good to kind of get that up front. I will say that Sebastian, um, when you were talking about the attention to detail, the unboxing experience, he mentions, um, Sebastian says, it's a really a pleasure to unbox them, the accessory box and the fittings. Um, it's a real premium feel. And that's the big thing. It's real aluminum. It's not, it's not, it's not, faux plastic aluminum and it's thick gauge aluminum it is you could tell that the quality and of those little touch points are is very 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 high so the thing that to also remember about um definitive is like we were talking about the bp 9000 series right now but we're also going to talk about demand and you'll see the same acoustic principles the same design principles the same idea of a premium out of box experience premium touch points is applicable across all Definitive's products. So when we we're using the BP9000 kind of as an example because it's it's been in the market and it's it's been very successful. But just remember everything we're talking about um, carries forward to all the products, and we always are thinking about that when we're building new products or refreshing a line or anything like that. Yeah, the fit and finish is a is an important thing. And each time you guys make a new speaker, um, it's amazing. Like when you first take it out of the box and you touch it and you look at even the paint finishes that are on the uh, on the demand series, the quality of that is excellent. And we'll get to that, but there's an example of attention to detail, right? There's six coats of paint to create that high gloss finish on the black and the white models, right? Mm -hmm. Six coats means you apply a coat, you polish it, apply a coat, polish. So again, it's it's all about the detail. And like Matt said, that you know part of the owning part of the definitive experience is not just how it sounds, but how it looks. And that's why you see, that's why you see things like demand, and that's why you see things like also on on BP9000. And, terms of the aluminum accents that are part of that product. Matt, I, we make other things besides what we've shown here today, right? Mm -hmm. Matt and Michael, yeah. We, yeah. we make a lot of other things. So are those just like ancillary products? You just kind of 
throw something together. Oh, we need an outdoor speaker. We need a sound bar. You know, let's get back to the demands and the BP. Yeah. Now, obviously, everything that we designed for Definitive, you'll see, you know, the near ubiquitous use of the same key technologies in, in the aluminum dome tweeter, uh, the BDSS driver technology. It's in our outdoor speakers, passive radiators in an outdoor speaker. That's crazy. Nobody else does that, base radiators. So no, every product that we design is always about providing that definitive experience, right, wherever the application is. And in sound bars, when I when I'm voicing a sound bar, uh, I actually have it, you know, sitting between my two D17s, and I'm trying to match the experience of the D17s to the sound bar as much as possible. So it's it's always about the same experience that we want to provide. And you still see the things like like that Michael talked about the the aluminum touch points. The uh, it's a the the cabin is made out of wood. How many sound bars have you seen that are made out of plastic? It's like those little those little mini system speakers people used to have that were made out of plastic with all the little disco lights on it. No, this is a sound bar made by a speaker company. So the principals he will not let Matt will not let them put the, the definitive name on something that is not designed like like a definitive well so we actually had a question about the aluminium that you just mentioned um the is it mainly for adornment or is there an acoustic property and would you use steel or titanium or any other type of metal for that matter would that make any difference well potentially any material that you attach to the cabinet could have deleterious or, or enhancing properties so we always look at how we're engineering something and how is it going to affect the sound. In the case of the demand series, obviously the aluminum baffles are beautiful, but the more important part about it from my perspective is it's an integral part of making sure the cabinet is designed rigid and doesn't resonate. Um, so there can be little things like the mass of the metal itself is going to, you know, like a heavy speaker is a better speaker because it has more mass to it. And therefore, when the transducer itself is moving, the speaker is not pushing energy away and the loudspeaker is moving around. So every aspect of these, these speakers uh, is considered with regard to its performance. Could you use different uh, materials? Sure. Um, and in, in terms of the baffles, would, would we look at like um, different materials? Well, probably not. There are a lot of things about aluminum that are, it, it's finishes, it's reliability, it's robustness, they're important. Now, if the question is pertaining to different materials, say in the tweeter, right? Uh, we always look at advancements in material science and how to enhance the, the definitive experience, but it always must be balanced between the performance and the value that you get. So we'll always continue to watch material science and say, how can we make the definitive experience better? Um, for instance, we, we studied titanium tweeters a couple of years ago. I just wasn't happy with the performance. They have a little bit too much of the tizzy, tizzy, that kind of stuff in them. And so the aluminum, the annealed aluminum has better internal damping. And that's why we continue to use it. So we have a question from Gary, uh, who joins us a lot. From, he's from South Africa. So it's either really late or really early for him. I'm never sure which session is which time zone for him. <laughs> for Michael and Matt, he would like you to both say, if you were going to build a 13.2 system with a Marantz SR8015, which definitive speakers would you use for uh. the ultimate system? Uh. That's a <laughs> wow. I think uh, <laughs> this will be an annoying engineering question for you. Uh, it, depends. <laughs> it, it depends. I would want to understand what is the, uh, the overall uh, setup of the entire room? How much control do you have over uh, the acoustic treatment? How large is the space? How large is the number of chairs uh, that we're trying to create um, in the theater? And then lastly, I, you know, in a scenario like this, I'd probably talk to the customer and I would talk about like, well, 
what are your listening preferences? Um, and so if it was a customer to, to, to maybe give a real answer without all my caveats, if it was just a movie junkie who just loved movies, movies, movies all the time, and um, I would go BP. If it was a customer who wanted a theater, who like myself is maybe a classical music nerd and they wanted to do dual action of listening to high quality two channel uh, as well as home theater, then I would go to demand. So a lot of impact here on the preference of the customer. Michael, do you want to take a swing at that? That's different than mine? No, I think you hit it. Um, I, if For home theater, I would definitely go you know, BP, um, I assume he says 13 channels, you're talking about uh, 7.1 with six height channels type of a scenario. Um, and then the real question is, is again, what kind of ceiling does he have? Does he have the ability to put, or she have the ability to put stuff into their ceilings? But um, for home theater, absolutely go um, go BP. I mean, that's what we do. It it wows people when they get that experience. Um, and, and again, for, uh, the base, the subwoofers built in, and the ability to add more subwoofers. So if if six subwoofers are not enough, you have you can add more. Um, but I definitely would would say that. And then obviously, if they're really into more um, music listening, the the demand obviously is is a wonderful speaker. And so you have lots of options with that as well. But it depends yeah. on their space. Yeah, I think uh, I think that was an unfair question. <laughs> and I'm sort of sorry I asked because I think what Gary was trying to get you to say is which of your children do you love the most? <laughs> do you love the demand or the BP the most? And I, I was just waiting to see if you would go with the politically correct answer or if you'd go, kids. you know what? The oldest one is actually my favorite. <laughs> yeah, we'd like to thank Michael and Matt and of course, Frederick, Jim and Jen for helping um, with the presentation. Um, and hopefully you've learned a lot about the thought process that goes into a de um, definitive um, a speaker lineup, regardless of whether you're looking at floor standards, bookshelves, satellite speakers, or even a sound bar. Um, the, a lot of these uh, um, ideas when it comes to design and, and how they operate and how they sound carries all the way across the brand. So for those who have to leave, take care, and we will talk to you soon.